in my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been thinking over ever since. Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone, he told me, just remember that all the people in this world haven't been given the same advantages as you have. He didn't say any more, but we've always been unusually communicative in a reserved way, and I know that he meant a great deal more than that. If personality is an unbroken series of successful gestures, then there was something magic about Jake Gatsby. Some heightened sensitivity to the promises of life. Gatsby had an extraordinary gift for hope. A romantic readiness, such as I have never found in any other person, and would likely never find again. Nick! Nick, darling, I'm paralyzed with happiness. Hello, Daisy. Nick Carroll, Miss Baker, and it's my cousin. Second cousin, what's your name? He and Tom went to Yale. Play football? No, Tom was the football player. Nick, there you are. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Care for a hit? Uh, uh, I get paranoid, but thank you. They also want a hit? Nick, I've been telling Jordan all about you. Did you find the place all right? Hard to miss next to Penn's Landing. What are you saying? Across the river. Camp. A little house I found. Really? <laughs> what a strange community. On either side of me, there are these huge estates that must go for 1,200 or maybe even 1,500 million a year. What do you value? 800. A month. Welcome to the heart of Philadelphia. How long do you stay? Until I make my fortune. Well, Tom will help you, won't you, darling? I stopped by Chicago on the way out. At least half a dozen people sent their love. Do they miss me? The whole town's desolate. All the cars have their left rear wheel painted black in mourning. And there's a persistent wail that can be heard all night across the shore. How wonderful. Let's go back, Tom. Tomorrow. You should see the baby. I'd like to. Oh, well, she's asleep. She's two years old. Haven't you met her? No, never. You should. What are you doing these days, Nick? Working in the stock market. Earning money in stocks? Everyone I know is doing it, making lots of money. After being in the war, the Midwest felt kind of dull to me. That's why I moved here. My father's financed me for a year. Hey, where are you from? St. Paul. Minnesota. You'll be rich as Midas one day. I found a dozen books while traveling through the wastes. I'm studying all the time. You'll help him, won't you, Tom? God, I'm stiff. I feel like I've been laying on that couch for what feels like years. Well, don't look at me. I've been trying to get you to Philly all afternoon. This will help. That's really all. So what? I'm in training. Yeah, I'm Anything done is being able to do that. I recognize you somewhere. You said you lived across the river, right? I didn't see you. I don't know a single. Yeah, Gatsby? Gatsby? What Gatsby? He lives in that huge mansion, the one that uh, looks like that French hotel. The aquarium? <laughs> For his parties. I live right next door. Our lawns are In two weeks, it'll be the longest day of the year. Do you always watch for the longest day of the year and then miss it? I always watch for the longest day of the year and then miss it. We should plan something. Uh, all right. What should we plan? What do people plan? Oh, look, I heard it. You did it, Tom. I didn't even mean to do it, but still you did it. That's what I get for marrying a brute of a man. A great big hulking specimen of a man. I hate the word hulking. Even if it's a joke. Hulking. Hulking, hulking, hulking. Have a hit, Nick. All right. <sighs> Got a nice place here, huh? Enormous. Belong to a Saudi prince. Come on, I'll show you around. Don't you steal him from me. Come on, I'll show you the horses. Please, Tom. Are you planning on staying here? Your goddamn fool's going anywhere else after New York was destroyed. This is a permanent move. Yeah, they uh, hated it. 
How long were you there? Uh, about a year. We followed the horse races around. Drifting, drifting endlessly. Parties and yachts and bulky men hitting horses with whips. You make me feel uncivilized. <laughs> we can't let civilization again go to pieces, Nick. We become a terrible pessimist about things. Have you read The Art of the Deal? <laughs> no. It's Tom's becoming very profound. He reads deep books with long words in them. What was that word? It's about winning. You win so much, you forget about losing. See, there's two types of people in this world. We have winners and we have losers. We can't let those losers take what we have. We've got to beat them down. We've produced all the things that make civilization, like science and art and all that. Do you see? Excuse me. Hello? Hey, how are you? I'm I'd love to see you in my house, Nick. What's you look like a rose, an absolute rose. Doesn't he, Jordan? An absolute rose. No. Excuse me. So, what are you doing? Shh! Who's guys? Stop. Stop. Something's happening. Something happening? Let everyone know. Tom, he's having an affair. An affair? It couldn't be helped. It's a romantic outdoors. There's a bird somewhere that must be a nightingale. Yes, a nightingale. He's singing away. It's very romantic, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, very romantic. Before you leave, I want to show you those horses. Excuse me. Hello. Very well, Nick. You're my cousin, and I barely know you. You didn't come in my way. The nuclear holocaust made it difficult. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I had forgotten. The war took a lot of good people away. I had a very bad time, Nick, and I'm afraid I'm pretty cynical about everything. I suppose she talks and eats and everything. Who? Your daughter. And he was less than an hour old. Tom wasn't there. He woke up feeling abandoned. And he asked the nurse if it was a boy or a girl. She said it was a girl. And I turned my head and wept. And I said to her, I'm glad it's a girl. And I hope she'll be a fool. It's the best thing for a girl to be in this world. A beautiful little fool. You see, everything's terrible anyhow. Everybody thinks so, the most advanced people. And I would know. I've been everywhere, seen everything, done everything. Sophisticated. God, I'm so sophisticated. 10 o'clock, time for this fool to go to bed. Jordan, Jordan's uh, playing at Citizens Bank tomorrow. <laughs> You're Jordan Baker, the baseball player. Good night. Wake me in eight, will ya? If you'll get up. <laughs> well, and uh, Mr. Carraway, see you soon? Of course you will. In fact, I think I'll arrange the marriage. Keep coming around, Nick, and I'll sort of fling you two together. Good night. <laughs> Haven't heard a word. I knew I'd seen her somewhere before. I see pictures of her on Facebook all the time. She's a nice girl, but uh, I shouldn't let her run around the country like that. Who? Her parents. The only family she has left is an aunt who's a thousand years old. Besides, Nick's going to look after her, aren't you, Nick? Rich girls don't marry poor boys. Nonsense! She's going to be spending a lot of weekends here this summer, and I think you would be a good influence on her. Is she from Philly? From Louisville. Our privileged girlhood was spent there. Our beautiful privilege. Did you give Nick a little heart-to-heart -heart talk while I was on the phone? Did I? I can't seem to remember, but I think we talked about the rise of fascism. <laughs> yes, I'm sure we did. It sort of just crept up on us. And then I Don't believe ever... everything you hear, Nick. I haven't heard a word. Okay. Uh, good night, Tom. Daisy. Good night, my sweet one, my dear sweet Nikki. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yes. Gatsby turned out all right in the end. But it's what preyed on Gatsby. 
What foul dust floated in the wake of his dreams that's been haunting me and haunts me still. Let's stop by the garage real quick. I want you to meet my girl. Mm. Presiding over all the boarded up houses and failed businesses stood the eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg. Some billboard left to decay there by an oculist entrepreneur looking to expand his practice. Wilson! Wilson! Wilson, my man. How's business? Oh, I can't complain. You gonna send me that blue car of yours? Yeah, I got my man working on it right now. We'll bring it by, uh, I don't know, next week. Working pretty slow, I say. As a matter of fact, he doesn't work slow. If you're not interested, I'm sure I can find someone else who is. I didn't mean it like that. I just meant I could fix up and turn Myrtle around. Wilson! Uh, Nick, this is uh, Mr. and Miss Wilson. Uh, why don't you go get some chairs so somebody can sit in? Okay, sure. Why don't you get on the next train? Okay, I'm going to you. Meet me at the apartment. <laughs> I really could use that car. I think I have a buyer. Hey, yeah, I'll keep my man on it. We'll get it by uh, tomorrow afternoon. All right, uh, Nick, we should probably go. Marlon, it was nice seeing you. I bought you a dog. Really? Yeah, for the apartment. Oh, you got me a dog? Yes. And it's made out of diamonds? Right. I love it. <laughs> Enough fooling around. Let's have some fun, huh? Aren't you worried your husband on finance? Oh, Wilson? He said dummy doesn't know he's alive. I think she's in the city visiting her sister. Come on, come on. Drink! <laughs> Drink! I have been wasted twice in my life. The second time was that afternoon. So I was on the Warmster line, leaving town, going to spend time with my sister. He had on a business suit and patent leather shoes. Time he looked at me, he had to pretend like I was looking at the advertisement above his head. Murder! Murder, where'd you run off to? Suddenly I began to like Philadelphia. Shut up, Myrtle! Don't you tell me to shut up? I'll say anything I like. Don't you say her name! Daisy! Daisy, Daisy, Daisy! And all the while there was this music coming from my neighbor's mansion. In his blue gardens, men and girls came and went like moths among the whisperings and the champagne and the stars. Take it out in the morning. Try to go out the old sport. The fire was a Franklin Bridge. 
of time. But I'm fast with you guys. Yes. Yes, uh, I, I'd like that very much. Uh, by the way, I'm Nick. Nick Carraway. <laughs> Mr. Carraway. Oh, Miss Baker, hello. Thought I'd find you here. You live next door. You having fun? Oh, to, to be completely honest, I'm having trouble remembering how I got here. I've been here for hours. I haven't even met the host. I live right over there. This man named Gatsby, he sent over his chauffeur to pick me up. My apologies. I'm Gatsby. What? Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. No, my apologies, little sore. Thought you knew. I'm afraid I'm not a very good host. Gatsby speaking with the Jane Gatsby. Oh, hello, my heat. Dude, anything you just ask for, I'll for I have to go to both of them. Excuse me. This is a small town. I don't feel like an idiot. I kept imagining it as old, extravagant, and fat. Who is he? Do you know? He's a man named Gatsby. Where's he from? I mean, and what does he do? I haven't the faintest idea. But people don't just come out of nowhere and suddenly buy a palace. Cats he did. But he must have some sort of a past. Great, now you're starting with something. It's just that everyone keeps talking about him. I don't know. He told me once he was in Oxford, but I, I don't know if I believe it, so. Why not? <laughs> no, I just don't. I've heard the wildest rumors about him. Mm. He's a cannibal? Yes. That he killed someone? Yes. That he's working with the Russians? Is he? Anyway, he throws these large parties. I love large parties. They're so intimate. Small parties you really don't get any privacy. So, are you having fun? I'm having fun with you. <laughs> Well, then you dance with me. Alright. <laughs> Daisy keeps talking about how so she's just so cute. She just keeps talking about cleaning us together. Well, uh, this would certainly make her happy. Okay, you're in love with her, aren't you? Isn't everyone? <laughs> Can I tell you a secret? Do you promise to tell do something about it? What do you mean? Tom stroll on town. First. One time in a Santa Barbara, California. Actually, it was a week after him and Daisy got married. Tom got in his head-on collision on Ventura Road. Rolled the car, when the broke her arm. Same thing in the hotel. Why does she put up with it? Why doesn't she just leave him? I don't know, maybe she help her. I'm so sorry, sir. I'll leave it to you, too, but uh, you know what I told you. And please, come and see me. Remember, we're going out tomorrow, not at I'm I'm so sorry I didn't recognize you earlier. Oh, don't mention old sport. Don't get another thought. Come on. Come on, I'll be there. Good night. Good night. Good night, old sport.
should go sometime. Go dancing. You don't want to associate yourself with those people. Come on, let's get inside. I miss parties. I know you do. And um, we'll go back, I promise. But right now, you need you. Okay? <laughs> Come on. I'll be up in a minute. I said Pammy needs you. And I said in a minute. That's fine. That's fine. Just do whatever you want, okay? You mean like you do? Look, I don't know what's gotten into you. Forget it, okay? Just come in before Pammy goes to bed. All right? All right? What's your opinion of me? What, we, we, we've only just met. Be frank, old school. Honestly, I've heard rumors. I understand. I want to tell you something about my life. See, I don't want you getting caught up in all these silly rumors that you hear. That's the God honest truth. I'm the son of some wealthy people from the Midwest. All dead now. I was brought up in America but educated in Oxford because all my ancestors had been educated there for many years. Sort of a family tradition, if you will. You see? My family all died. Then I came into a great sip because I would deal with money. And then I ran into all the people in the world. Lived by the young prince. Paris. Venice. Rome. Nothing to get the game. Collecting jewels. Mostly rubies. I can't think just a little bit of myself, trying to forget the sad thing that happened a long time ago. And then came the war of school, Puerto Rico. I was given the first commission as lieutenant when it first all began. And I tried very hard to die, but it seems that I have had a very enchanting life. Fall of BC, were you there? Parkfield. Uh, this is downtown. Because two years so far forward, there was nearly a half a mile gap on either side where we couldn't advance. We stayed there for five days and four nights, and at one point we ran out of bullets and began fighting hand to hand. By the time the smoke was clear, the reinforcements arrived, I was promoted to major and given a declaration by every government still left standing. Check this out. This is a Legion of Honor. Read the back. Major Jay Gatsby for Valor Extraordinaire. Did you get a purple heart too? I saw the answer, sure. No souvenir for my Oxford days. The man on the left right there is not Earl of Doncaster. And it's all true. Of course. I, I didn't mean it like that. It's just something right on the sport. Why are you telling me this? I wanted to make a very big request of you today. So I figured that you should know me better. See, I... You, you planned all this. I knew I could trust you. you see, I normally find myself floating between strangers here and there trying to get the very sad thing that happened to me. You'll find out this afternoon. At lunch? Yes, but not for me. You'll be having lunch with Miss Baker. Are you in love with Miss Baker? <laughs> oh no, old sport. But Miss Baker has kindly consented to speak to you about this man. I don't understand. Why don't you just tell me yourself? This is a delicate matter, old sport. Hello, Nick. Oh, Tom. Oh, oh, <laughs> what, what are you doing here? I come here all the time. Uh, what um? Where the hell you been? He's curious. You have a call. Oh, I uh. Tom, this is Mr. Gatsby. Uh, Mr. Gatsby, Mr. Buchanan. Sir? How are you? What, uh, why are you here? 
I'm having lunch with Mr. Gatsby and Ms. Baker. Behave yourself with her. <laughs> Why don't you come up to the apartment? Hey, meet us. I got some uh, LA Confidential. We'll have a good time. <laughs> Listen, I got some friends with you. Uh, sir, it was, uh, it was nice meeting you. just so that he could invite her over to a stranger's cottage? All this time, he's been waiting for her to walk into one of his parties. It's why he has them. He wants to show her what he's created for her, for them. 
and you live right next door, so it's not a coincidence, I think. Incredible. Are you good? Does Daisy want to see him? She's not to know about it. Gatsby does not want her to know. You're just supposed to invite her to tea and, well, alone, of course. I'm not sure I'm comfortable. Daisy needs something in her life, don't you think? And what about you? What if I invited you to tea? Would you come? Thank you. 
we ever met again, it would be when we were older and decrepit. Did you know I'd be here? I've arranged it. I'm so sorry for all the hurt I've caused. And we could have been so happy. I've missed you, Jay. I've missed you so much. I've never missed you as much as I do right now. Stop raining. I'm glad, Jay. I'm glad. Beyond everything, how could one mortal possibly live up to it? The king's daughter, the golden girl, illusion. But no amount of fire or freshness can challenge what a man will store up inside his ghostly heart. The earth is trying to fall into the sun. It's actually, uh, it's the opposite of that. The sun is getting colder. <laughs> Don't look so sad. There's nothing. 
living in all this world, I want to be in your precious love. I'd like to get one of those pink clouds, put you in it, and push you around. <laughs> What do we do with ourselves this afternoon and the next day and the next 30 years? Let's do some more of it. Life starts all over when it gets crucified in the ball. But it's so hot and everything's so confused. Let's go to town. What was my idea? You look so cool. Always so cool. You resemble that man in the advertisement at the gas All right. I'm uh, perfectly willing to go to town. Hey, why don't we all go to town? Come on, if we're going, let's start. Let's have some fun, it's too hot to fuck. You wanted to go? Fine, have it your way. I don't know why we have to go to town. We're gonna get these notions. Shall we take the volcano? Yeah, and some whiskey. Can't say anything this household is for. She's got an indiscreet voice. I don't know what it is, it's like it's, it's full of money. Yes. Let's go with money. Glad to take my car. Huh. You would have expected a chauffeur. Well, I prefer to do my own drive. Yeah. Why don't uh why don't you take my car and I'll take your car to town? I'm afraid there's not enough gas. Nah, there's plenty of gas. Besides, if it runs out, we can stop by a drugstore. You can buy anything at a drug store, you ought to know that. Come on, Daisy, you with me in your old pit mobile. How about you take Nick and Jordan? <clears throat> We'll meet you at the hotel. I'll be the man smoking two cigarettes. Did you see that? See what? You think I'm pretty dumb, don't you? I hired a private investigator. What? You found out he was an Oxford man? Oxford man? He wears a pink suit. He did go to Oxford. Yeah, Oxford, New Mexico, maybe. <laughs> I'm stopping for gas. Well said! I'm sick. What's the matter with you? I'm a sick all day. Is it Luke Cameron? Come on, send me that blue car of yours. I, uh, I bought that one last week. What do you think? Yeah, that's a nice yellow. Yeah, you ever seen anything that nice before? No, sir, Mr. Luke Cameron. You want to buy it? <laughs> yeah, right. I could make some money off the other one. You know, I could fix up, turn a profit. Me and my wife, we, we trying to go out west. Your wife wants to go? Yes. You know, something strange been going on for a couple of days. That's why I've really been bothering you about the car. You really gotta go. How much are you for the gas? Um, 120. Keep the change. You can have the car, I'll bring one more. All right. Thanks. Is everything all right? Just fine. Let's go. Wait a minute, I, uh, I got one more question for you, Mr. Gatsby. 
Please hold on, Mr. Chairman. Please hold on. Yeah. What uh? What kind of trouble are you trying to cause in my house? He isn't causing any trouble. You're causing trouble. Please have a little self control. Self control. <laughs> I'm supposed to let Mr. Nobody from nowhere make love to my wife? Well, if that's the idea, you can count me out. See, nowadays people begin by smearing at family life and family institutions. And next thing you know, we'll be throwing everything overboard and people will be having sex with boys. Your wife doesn't love you. You see your wife, she's never loved you. She's never loved you. You're crazy. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. You see, she never loved you. She only married you because I was poor and she was tired of waiting. Of course, it was a terrible, terrible mistake, but we loved each other that entire time, haven't we? Stay. Why don't we all go home? Sit down, please. Sorry. Okay. Come on, I'm in here all about it. I told you it's been going on for five years. You've been seeing him for five years? No, not seeing. You couldn't. We both loved each other that entire time, haven't you? That's all? You are crazy. I can't speak about what happened with Daisy in five years, so I didn't even know that. And I'd be damned to see how you got within a mile of unless you bought a grocery store back door. For all the rest of that's a goddamn lot. Daisy loved me when she married me and she loves me now. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Buchanan. No, she doesn't. I'm sorry. She does. <laughs> and I love her too. Daisy, I love you. Now, sometimes I go off on a little spree, but I, I always come back. Spree. Yeah, and in my heart, I love her all the time. You're revolted. How about Chicago? You want to tell me about that little spree? It's all over Daisy Bell now. It's all over. Tell me the truth that you never loved him. All this pain will be wiped out forever. How can I ever love him? Tell me the truth that you never loved him. I never loved him. I never loved him. Never? No, never. Never? No. Not a Cathy Olani? Not that time I carried you down from the punch bowl to keep your shoes dry? Never? Please don't. Daisy. There, Jay! You want too much. I love you now, isn't that enough? I can't help what's past. I did love Tom once, but I loved you too. Love me too? Even that is a lie. She didn't know you were alive. There are things between me and her, Gatsby, that you'll never know. Things that we can't forget. See, I need to see you through my You got excited now, don't you? Let's go, listen, please, don't listen. Even alone, I can't say I never loved Tom what? Of course it wouldn't. That doesn't matter to you. Of course it matters. I'm going to take better care of you from now on. I'm not taking care of Daisy any longer. She's leaving. That's nonsense. I end up. She is not. Certainly not for a common criminal like you. Mr. Gatsby, who are you anyhow? You see, I made a small investigation into your affairs. You're part of Wolf's crew. Please, let's just all go home. See, him and this Wolf, they, uh, they went around and bought up a lot of paraphernalia shops. And then they started selling a new drugs over the counter. It's only me, old sport. Don't call me old sport. That's nothing compared to your money laundering scheme. Oh, but your friend doesn't seem to object to that. Yeah, you know what? I've been thinking about that. How does a reputable banker like Walter Chase find himself in debt up to his eyeballs to a little raghead like Walter? City Miles called the old sport. Yeah, that's right. You got half the city out there drinking your booze, smoking your pot every weekend at that amusement park. I'm surprised he isn't trying to bring you in. My God, he has. Wait, 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 he has nothing to do with, with what? The criminal empire? Daisy? Daisy, let me see who this guy is. His house, his clothes, his fancy parties. He's just a front for Wolf, a gangster. To get his claws into respectable people like Walter Chase. <laughs> you know the respectable thing about you all sport is your money. Your money, that's it. Of course, now that I have just as much as you, that means that we're people. <laughs> Oh, no. No, we're different. I am, they are, she is. We're all different than you. You see, we were born different. It's in our blood. And nothing you can do, or say, or steal, or dream of would ever change that. A girl like Daisy would never... Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! You can talk about these stuff! Shut up! Serious apologies. I, I must have lost my temper. 
Yes. Show us some of your fine absolute measures. A. I have no consequence at all. Listen, man. Just go to the Just go back. This is going to be all things. Please tell me I can't stand it anymore. Shh. All right. So I'm going home and get after this car. Go on. Don't want to know you anymore. You realize this little flirtation is over with. Daisy? Daisy! Nick, Jordan, you know, want some? What? You want some? No. I just remember today's my birthday. Happy birthday! I'm oh, sorry. finally decided to make a way home. Tom talked incessantly, exulting and laughing as if he'd won some kind of game. Human sympathy has its limits. And beside me, her head on my shoulder, Jordan nestled close. But I didn't know her. The promise of a decade of loneliness. A fitting list of single men to know. A fitting briefcase for enthusiasm. So we drove on towards death in the cooling twilight. Jay Gaskins, 
a quote or he throws those little parties that he knows what he's talking about. Maybe you the one murder was sleeping with. Maybe that's why he killed her. Uh -oh. Yeah, maybe. A guy like that, who knows? No, he didn't have to kill her. He didn't have to kill her. No. That's Something ought to be done to him, George. Go pay. What a coward. He didn't even stop his car. You gonna defend him now?
What about it? You said one bad driver is only safe until she meets another bad driver. I said that another bad driver. But you were different, Nick. I thought you were honest, straightforward, and said your secret pride. I'm 30, Jordan. <sighs> 30. I'm five years too old to lie to myself and call an honor. Right. Goodbye. Hello, Nick. Jesus, what are you doing? Just standing here, old sport. How's traffic? There was an accident. Was she killed? Instant. I thought so. Two days, I thought so. Better she take the shot all at once. She took it very well, though. She got the car to Camden, but we left it in my garage, but I don't think it even saw it, so she can't be too sure. Who was she? Myrtle Wilson. Her husband owns the garage. What the hell happened? Well, I tried to grab the wheel from Daisy. Daisy? D Daisy was driving? Yes, yeah, so but of course I'll say I was. I assumed that... When we left the hotel, she was very nervous old school. She thought it would make her feel better to drive. Then this woman came rushing out of this and we were crossing over and another car was coming from the other direction. It all happened so fast, it seemed like she wanted to speak to us. Like it was someone that she knew. The baby turned away from the woman into the other car, then she got afraid and turned back. And by the time I grabbed the wheel, that's when I felt the shock. It ripped her to pieces. I don't want to know. Why didn't you stop and get some help? Daisy stepped on her. I tried to get her to stop, but she couldn't, so I grabbed her to the emergency break. And we stopped, but after that, she laid into my lap and asked me to took me home. You've got to go to the police. I can't do that. Just tell them it was an accident. I'm going to fix everything. But everyone saw the car. There are eyewitnesses. You can't hide a car like that. They'll trace it to you, and, and then they'll find out Daisy was driving. I won't let that happen. Neither will you. We'll be fine in the morning. I'm gonna stay here and wait just to check to see if he tries anything. You gotta get out of here. Just go to Atlantic City for a week. Take a trip to Mexico. I can't do that. I can't possibly be Daisy. You got a joint? It's my last one. You can serve. You first. Daisy, of course. I mean, 
she didn't really have anything to, a chance to give me because I didn't have anything to offer. But she did. Because she was in love with me. Is in love with me. And now I have her back. And things will be the way they should be. Thank you. For what? That must be my Uber. Um, you better come home with me. You want to know something funny? I haven't used the pool all summer. I think I'll go for a swim. I really wish you'd leave town for a few days. You've been a good friend, Lee. I appreciate it. I'll call you tomorrow. Days you call as well, don't you think? I, I suppose so. After all, we have made promises to each other. Yes. Hey, goodbye. Goodbye, old sport. Gatsby. You're worth all of them put together. Well, Eager and untrue. 
I found myself on Gatsby's side and alone. I called Daisy to see how she was taking it, but she and Tom had left that afternoon. She didn't even send him a flower. After Gatsby's death, the East became haunted, distorted. You're all careless people. You smash up human beings and then retreat back into your money, letting others clean up the mess. The moon rose higher. And as I stood there brooding on the old unknown world, I thought of Gatsby's wonder when he first picked out the green light at the end of Daisy's dock. He had come a long way to this blue lawn and this huge failure of a house. And at times, his dreams must have seemed so close that he could hardly fail to grasp them. Gatsby believed in the green light, in the orgastic future that year by year recedes before us. It eluded us then, but it's no matter. Tomorrow, we will run faster, stretch out our arms farther, and one fine morning, beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past.